Thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Michelle Seidler, founder of School of the Seers and Michelle Seidler Ministries. To hear more from Michelle or for more information about her ministry, please visit our website at www.michelleseidler.com. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you for the good plans that you have this morning. Mm. We welcome you. Thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for impartation this morning. Thank you for impartation. Yeah, thank you. Not because of any good words. But you, Holy Spirit, you search the mind and the heart of the Father. You take those things that belong to Jesus in the heart of the Father and you make them known. You make known the good things. <laughs> Nothing but good things. You make them known to us. So we thank you and we welcome you, Holy Spirit, this morning to just impart, to release the voice, your voice. We welcome your voice right now. I just thank you that they'll hear you in this room today. They hear your voice. You know where each person's at on their journey. So we thank you for that bread. This morning, Jesus, you are the bread of life. You are the bread of life. You said those who eat this bread never be hungry again. Those who drink from you will never be thirsty again. And we just say this morning that we're hungry. We're hungry. Jesus, we're hungry for you. <laughs> we're hungry for you, word of life, bread of life. We're hungry for you, Jesus. We're thirsty this morning. Thank you for refreshing us. And Father, we thank you. You are love. You are love, Father. Father. Thank you for releasing your heart this morning. Father, I thank you that those here in this room will leave, even this afternoon. Father, being touched, feel that in their flesh and their bodies and their souls, God, they would feel your affections for them. Father, that they would leave here into another place in your love. Revelation. The length, the width, the depth, the height, the love of Jesus that's found in you, Father. We release that this morning. We thank you for ears that hear, eyes that see. Truly, Holy Spirit, take us up in your story, this story of love. Let us see. Let us hear. We just declare changed lives today. I declare just divine alignment. I declare on earth this morning, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Holy Spirit. Amen. So, page one. Why prophecy? So, Revelation 19.10 says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Jesus has a testimony. And it's about his father and his father's plan. 
Jesus has something to say. He has a testimony. He has a word. He has a declaration. He has a passion. (laughs) And it's about his father. And prophecy, the spirit of prophecy is what reveals this testimony. It reveals the Father, his nature, his ways, and his plan for creation, and to bring people into life. So John 17, the heart of Jesus. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, as you have given him eternal given him authority, you've given him eternal authority for sure, (laughs) over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. So I'm just, I want to go into the heart of Jesus in this. And his passion and his desire, the reason that he came. There were many things that he did when he came, right? He took the keys, hell, sin, death, right? He made a way for freedom, but there's a passion in his heart that he had when he was here. The the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. He has a burning passion to reveal his father, You read it all throughout the Gospels. If you've seen me, you've seen my Father. The works that I do, they declare my Father. This passion in his heart was about the Father. And we're invited into that. In John 17, I, you know, if we had John 17 and that was it, I I could live there. I mean, that's the Gospel, if you ask me. (laughs) John 17. I mean, it's the best chapter in the whole Bible. It's his heart, you know, this union of this, this passion, desire to be one together in unity, one with the Father. God, Father, that they would know your love, that they would know this love that you put in me, the way that you love me, that it would be in them. And why? Why? I say this all the time, and I'll say it again. (laughs) You are here. I'm here. You're here because of love. If If you're trying to figure out what your purpose is, what your destiny is, why am I here, I'm going to give you the answer right now. It's love. You're here because of love. You're here because of love. You're here because you have a creator, because you have a father who loves. God is love. He demonstrated his love by giving us his son. You have a father who loves. It's why you're here. You're here because of love. And your whole journey here, your whole, from the beginning to the end, is a journey. You're on a journey. We're all on a journey of being conformed into his image, right? From glory to glory to glory. I'm getting way ahead in the notes. (laughs) And we're conformed into his image from glory to glory by seeing him. As we behold him, right? We become like him. We see him, we're changed. We're co- and we see him, we're conformed. The heart of Jesus is to reveal the Father, but the heart of the Father is to give his son a bride. She looks like him. 
That's really the story. When you line up with that and you get that, it sets course for your life. Got a witness. <laughs> I asked this morning for that witness. There we go. So, burning on the heart of Jesus is that the Father would be known. Here's some scriptures for you. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. From the beginning of creation, God's desire was and is to be known. He wants to be known because he loves. He so loves and desires to be known by his creation that he sent his son, who is his expressed image. When we see Jesus, we see the uncreated, invisible God. And I want to talk about some ways um, that the Father has invited us into knowing him, into seeing him. Um, the primary way was through his son. I mean, you get this, this creator, this father who loves and he's so longing to be known by you. Longing to be known. We have a God who longs. We have a God full of passion, full of desire, full of longing. He longs, he desires to be known by you. So he created you that you would know him. And not only that you would know him, because the knowing him, what is it about him that he, that he wants you to know? Multiple things. <laughs> but they all come from this root place in his heart that he loves. I'm, I'm laying a foundation for prophecy. <laughs> it's so important that you know this and you have this so that you're coming from that understanding of what is this about. That you know that his greatest passion, the Father's greatest desire is to be known when you know that and you come to prophesy. You partner with his heart in declaring who he is, but from a place of understanding, from a place of revelation. Because without love, we're nothing, right? Apart from love, it's pointless. You ever wonder about that? Like really wonder about that? Why is it pointless apart from love? Because God is love. <laughs> That's why. So through his son, the very life of Jesus declares who the Father is. His very life. I'm not even just talking about the cross right now. I'm just talking about his life. When we see him, when we see what he did, when we see how he acted, when we see what he said, we're seeing the very Father. So therefore, the life of Jesus the very life of Jesus is a prophecy. Because the spirit of prophecy is about revealing the Father. The spirit of prophecy. The core root, the purpose of prophecy is to make God known. To make him known foundation of prophecy that God would be known 
And again, not that he's just known, but that he loves. God is love. So Jesus' life. I always say this too. Like, I encourage you guys, Sermon on the Mount. Don't read it like this is the way I'm supposed to be. This is the way I'm supposed to act. These are my Christian duties. This is what I'm supposed to be like. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm not saying don't do those things. But I encourage you, read it from a perspective that this is who Jesus is. This is who the Father is. Because he's not asking us to do something that he's not. It does you no good to read it and try to do it and try to be it. Uh, Maybe I'm the only one, but I've tried it. It works a little. But when you read it and you go, oh, this is who you are, and you see him in it, it changes your, your inward chemistry. The whole word. I mean, what did Jesus say? He rebuked them. He said, you search the scriptures for in them you think that you're going to find eternal life. But these very words speak of me. It's me. This is him. (laughs) He is the word. He's the living word. This This is to bring us into him. Who he is, which is revealing the father. It's a love story. This is his heart here. This is him. So just throw that at you guys. Encourage you when you're reading it, look at him. This is who he is. Don't try to be something. Don't try to do something. Just look at him when you read it. See him. Ask him. Talk to him. This is who you are. This is how transformation happens. This is how we come into agreement. This is where life is. Life is found where? In him. He is life. So when you read it, just just a shift in perspective. Shift in the way you look at it. Shift in the... And the way that you approach it, the way you come to the word, come to it like literally when you sit down and you open it and you read it, this is Jesus. Here you are. I mean, that sounds kind of blasphemy in a way, <laughs> but it's true. Let's, let's have a conversation. Who are you? Reveal yourself to me. And then, you know, let's see. Paul, right? I thank my God. Philippians. Oh, I love Philippians. <laughs> I d- actually do this with Philippians too. I read Philippians 2 and I see Jesus. This is who you are. This is his nature. This is who he is, that he's the humble one. He's the one who, who doesn't think a thing about himself. That he considers others better than himself. He thinks of others more highly than himself. Do you know that? Who he is. Do you know that he sees you more important than him? Ouch. He really does. He's not like up there like, woo, I'm the greatest. He's the greatest servant of all. Most humble, meek man that ever lived. Just because he's at the right hand of God doesn't mean that that's that he's got this like huge like I'm the greatest now. I'm going there. <laughs> so I had this encounter one time. I am in a car. And 
Um, just adoring the Lord. And uh, just, I love you, you know. And he asks me a question. How many of you have heard this? I think so. Okay, good. So I don't feel like I'm just filling your ears and you've heard it ten times. Um, uh, he asked me a question. He said, Michelle, what do you want? And I knew he was, re- he was referring to... Um, I've, I've never been married, so I knew he was asking me about that. And I said, uh, it, it kind of just threw me off at first because it wasn't uh, in my mind. What do I want? And I said, um, you know, I'm on, a, I'm on a journey of love, like we all are. And I said, you know my journey of love. You know what it's going to take to conform me into the image of your son. You know how to bring me forth in love. So whatever you want to give to me, that's what I want. Bring me into love, however you want to do that. Big picture, (laughs) right? So right when I said that, I'm in this place where I see Jesus in the garden. And he's weeping, and um, it, the very essence of the garden, the, the whole feeling, the whole smell was nothing but love. It was nothing but love in that place. And I'm seeing this man before his father so loved the father that I could, I could feel his heart. Like I could see um, what was going on in him internally. And the, the thing that got my attention more than anything else, and I kept saying it, I was like, he did it his father's way. He did it his father's way. Like, this expression of love that Jesus was um, showing the Father, his expression of love was that he did it his Father's way. And it meant the garden and it meant the cross. And I was just like, wow, you did it your Father's way. You did it your Father's way. And then I'm watching him carry the cross And I'm watching him walk down this road, and I'm thinking, wow. Then I'm thinking, wow, the wisdom of God. It's so opposite of the way that we would do things. That his father's way was for him to take a cross for a bride to express love. And it's called wisdom. (laughs) I don't have words for it. So so then I'm seeing him on the cross. And the whole time when he was in the garden and when he was walking, I was seeing a son before his father. And that was the reality that I was seeing. When I, when I saw him on the cross, it changed. And he was my bridegroom. He was Jesus, the our bridegroom, on the cross. And he's looking at me. And he's saying, I did this for you. I did this for you. As a bridegroom, I did this for you. Bridegroom, husband, lays down his life that he would lift me up. It's his heart for us. He's like, I want my glory to be shown on you. The same way that I shine my Father's glory, that my Father's glory rests on me. I want my glory to shine on you. And I was aware that he went so low to lift me up. And he, he did it so that, that we would come into the fullness of all it. And when we were in our mother's womb, all that the Father knit, would come forth. 
So his heart and his, his vision, his heartbeat, Jesus' heartbeat, was that his bride would come forth in fullness. That's why he did what he did. At what a cost. So he's not, he's not there now like, I'm the greatest, look at me, serve me. He's looking at you. He's serving you. How do I, how, you know, come under and lift you up? Who are you? Who are you and how do I bring that forth? That's the way he's looking at you. And, I, and as this is going on, I'm thinking, wow, how would I ever fail? <laughs> how could I ever fail? Because it wasn't just like, in that I was like, wow, he's fighting for me. He fought for me. He made a way for me to come forth into the fullness of all that the Father created me to be. But he's fighting for me as well. Now. I, I, I could not contain even a pinch of the love I was feeling in this. There, I, I'm, I'm, as it's going on, I'm crying and I'm going, I have to contain this. <laughs> How do I contain this? Like, how do I stay here? How do I hold on to this reality? Um, this love that I couldn't, it, it, I couldn't hold on to it. And it was, it's so um, humbling. You would think, you know, in the natural that, you know, when he, because he kept saying it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. You would think that you kind of get like, woo, it's all about me. It humbled me. It humbled me. You know, the wisdom of God, the way of God to humble us is through his love. When you see how this man is serving you, when you see how low he goes to make a way for you to bring you forth, there's no... There's no puffed up in that. It brings humility. And then what does that produce in your heart, in my heart? I want to serve him. It's the Godhead, his heart. I want to serve you, my bride. I want to serve you. I want to serve you. I want to bring you forth. And then what is the, the response in our heart, in my heart? How do I serve you? It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all of them are like, it's all about you. It's all about you. <laughs> you know, it's love. It's the low, low place. We're in an in a, in a, in a atmosphere um, where life lives, where life comes forth. Honor. It's the place of miracles place of birthing you were birthed out of that place I was birthed out of that place so I just thank you right now Holy Spirit thank you right now I just declare over each person here each person in this room today that you would bring us all into that reality holy spirit it's a revelation right now of the one who the one who loves yeah tell you this I, I prophesy it I declare it this truth we're going to hear more about it I believe it's part of the mystery of Christ in the church this bridegroom
it's going to shift the church. And you're going to see women come forth. The bride, but it's representative of the bride coming forth. Got a glimpse of it. <laughs> We're going to hear more about it. This revelation, ask for it. Ask for it. He's fighting for you to come forth into fullness. I love this. Was listening the other day to um, Danny Silk. How many of you guys know? Um, he was talking about headship. How many of you guys have heard him talk about that? Talks about the head and what is the head. And he, he says that the head is actually, I can't preach his message, but that the head is actually the foundation that you build on. The head is actually the lowest point, not the highest point. It's really the apostolic being released. It's the place of serving. It's the place of humility. It's love. Okay, I'll move on. Or I won't get through the notes. Ask for that, though. Ask for it. So through his son, the father desires to be known. He makes himself known through his son. Through the written word, I talked about that. The word itself is a prophecy. It's a testimony. It declares who God is, what he's done, what he will do. Through creation, the Father is declaring who he is through creation. This is prophecy. All of creation is prophesying. Changing of seasons. Prophesy, Jesus. The birth of babies. Marriages. Every time there's a marriage, it's declaring our wedding to the Lamb. All of creation. I'm going to stop because you all think I'm weird if I keep going. I'll scare some of you too early. I got to wait till tomorrow till you're a little more comfortable. <laughs> you're still filling me out, so <laughs> I'll be careful. Through our own testimony. Do you know that your testimony is a prophecy? Do you know Why? Do you know why your testimony is a prophecy? Because it declares who God is. What, what he did in your life declares who he is. So many times we get stuck in the what, in the what he did, and the what he did when the what declares the who. The what declares the who. That's why Jesus said, these works that I do, they declare my Father. His nature. He, he's a healer. He healed me from cancer. That's great. He did something. Don't, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not belittling that. But there's more to it than he did something. It's the who. He's a healer. That's the power in your testimony. Do you know that? That's where the life is. That's where the power resides in a testimony. Not in the this is what he did, but this is the who. So are you guys tracking me? We're talking about prophecy. It's about the who. Who is this God? That's the power in, the, in, in prophecy, in the testimony. Miracles, signs, wonders. The fact that you're saved, think about it. I, now, if I told you all my story, <laughs> you go, wow, he's a God that loves. And you guys have those testimonies too, I'm sure. 
But the fact that you have a testimony, the fact that, you're, that you have given your life to him is a testimony that you have a God who loves. Think about it. How many of you were steeped in deep, deep darkness when he came? What does that say about who he is? You ever think about that? Who 